Hello and welcome to Internet Business Models. Over the next four modules, we'll cover the four different ways to make money off the Internet. You'll learn how to launch your digital products, build an online advertising empire, leverage off the e-commerce trend, and even set up your high-ticket offers and programs. This is super important, and with you going through this training, you're putting yourself ahead of the pack. Why? Because most people jump in head-on without understanding the framework and concept of the respective business model. They end up making more mistakes than progress and spend more time, money, and resources unnecessarily. Guess what happens after that? Yep, they get frustrated and give up when they're so close to success. It's like three feet from gold. This training helps you to strike gold by understanding the business model first so you can execute the plan effectively. So let's start. The first module is Product Launch Secrets. This training is designed specifically for those who want to launch their first product online. No more going through random trial and error before launching a product because what I'm about to share with you is the complete launch model you need. So you'll be guided through the eight important elements of a successful launch. These elements are modeled off what is currently being used by six- and seven-figure Internet marketers who launch their own products each month in the market, and some even say it is the gold standard for product launches. The eight elements are 1. Planning your launch 2. The art of copywriting 3. Outsourcing your work 4. Creating your sales funnel 5. Striking JV partnership 6. Launch time and 7. Post-launch Each element will be discussed further in the following modules. The first component of launching your product is to plan your launch. This sounds simple, but it is one of the most overlooked steps by new Internet marketers. First, you need to do market research. This is before anything else so you can create a product with high relevance to the needs of the market. This is a cornerstone rule in Internet marketing, but it is also one of the most skipped or overlooked steps by Internet marketers. Creating a new product without doing research is very risky, as it can potentially waste your precious time, money, and resources. So, where do you understand the market needs? First, create an account on jvzoo.com. This is the most well-known affiliate site among the Internet marketers. It's a marketplace for product creators and affiliate marketers to market their various digital products, ranging from ebooks, video tutorials, software, apps, and plugins. Second, compile a list of featured products of the past six months. You can find this information under the Featured Products section in JVZoo. You are directed to a page where you can view the top picks for the past months. On the right side of the page, you can view See More, where there is a month's list starting from the current month to the previous months. Click on the month and it brings you to the featured products of the selected month. Get familiar with the system as soon as you can. Next, organize the list using an Excel spreadsheet. Categorize your findings to its respective month where the products were launched. Then create another category in another column and categorize it accordingly as software program, a web-based app, graphics, or a hybrid product. A hybrid product is a combination of two different product types, for example, a web-based software that generates graphics and logos. The last category and column is purpose. For example, is the product created for traffic or list building, email marketing, SEO or logo and graphics creation? This is your job to organize your research so you can easily analyze and measure the data. When you've listed out all the featured products, you'll see a pattern. What you find is a list of the most and least popular products for the past six months. The reason why we're analyzing it is to know what's been selling well in the market. This indicates the needs of the market. You may also research up to 12 months and analyze to see if there is a product launch pattern according to the months. For example, is the month of December filled with fire sales or graphic product launches or something else? That's why planning and research is important for your product development. The key word you're looking at is innovation. Take a closer look at the evolution of mobile phones, computers, and even your printers. These things are hardly original when they were released. 
Would you agree with me if I say they are only revisions of previous creations? Yes? So how is this information important during the planning phase? It means you don't necessarily need to invent an entirely new product to become successful in your business. Any existing products will always have room for improvement. Look up what is selling in the market and analyze it. From there, just improvise and innovate. Create your own product with two or more added product types or recycle features from the previous ones and you're good to go. The next component of launching your digital product is copywriting. All sales of digital products are heavily influenced by good copywriting, no matter how good or how relevant you think your product is for the market. If your communication or selling story is wrong, you won't be able to make one sale. Copywriting is a valuable skill in any online business, and it is the number one key factor for your success. Remember, it's not just about your product, but your skill to create desire in your prospect. There are eight steps in creating a hypnotic sales letter to hook your customers. One headline, two subheadline, three introduction, four regurgitation, five solutions, six call to action, seven handling objections, and finally eight PS. The most important part in every sales letter is the headline. It creates the first impression of your product. You need to hook your customer's attention by writing about the results and benefits of your solution. Specify it in the headline. Remember, features tell and benefits sell, so be specific and focus on the benefits and results. The more specific the results, the more attractive your headline is. Next is the subheadline. Every good headline must have a subheadline to support it. If the start of your headline serves to hook your prospect's attention, the subheadline, on the other hand, pulls your prospect to read further. This usually appears under your headline, or it can be above it and is one or two font sizes smaller than the headline. The subheadline is also important to catch the attention of page scrollers to read what they are interested in. So what matters is the supporting sales copy the subheadline is emphasizing on as it helps to pull the curiosity of your prospects further. Next is the introduction. A sales letter doesn't have to be formal. Despite the number of views it's going to get, your writing tone should be that of a one-on-one -on -one instead of a broad general address. Share a little about yourself and how the prospect can relate to where you once were and how you can help him achieve his goals. Then start addressing their problem. If it doesn't attract some of your prospects, that's all right, because this is also the time to weed out those who aren't interested. You want to spend time and effort on those who are interested because they're the ones who are looking to pay to solve a problem. Next is to regurgitate. Here you exaggerate an existing problem by showing your prospect an inferior alternative over your offer. For example, let's say your prospects are looking for graphic design solutions. They want to create ebook covers and do simple designs. Now, not everyone can afford an Adobe Photoshop license, as it is very pricey. Some even lack the design skill, time, and money to do what's necessary. With this piece of information, your offer aims to solve their problem. Now, mention the long-awaited solution for them. Introduce to them how your solution creates logos, ebook covers, and avatars which they can use for their websites and digital products. Don't forget to provide the features and benefits your solution delivers. If you have more than one component to your solution, divide them into sections or categories. The benefits of your products must be bold and colorized, advisably the color yellow for emphasis. Next is handling objections. There will always be people who doubt amongst your prospects. The solution to this is to identify the top 10 or 20 questions you think your customers will ask and address them in your copywriting. We call this the FAQ or Frequently Asked Questions. Write those questions down and start answering them. Pick the top three to five frequently asked questions answered by you and put them right after your solution. Additionally, you can add testimonials from your past and active customers. It can be in the form of a social network post or a video testimonial. There's always the money-back guarantee option. If you want to give your prospect confidence that you're not a scammer of any kind, 
then this option is worth considering. You could consider a 30 or 60 day money back guarantee where your customer can request for a refund within that time period. If you clearly receive a customer who has ill intentions of purchasing and purposely asking for a refund even though the product's good, we call them serial refunders, then no worries, just block the customer from future purchases in your system. Your money back guarantee is how you want to convince your customers and give them confidence that you stand by your product quality. Name your price in the call to action. Notice how most sales letters reveal the price only towards the end? That's because once your prospect is exposed to the price, you need him to click on the bottom and make a decision to purchase now, not later. Waiting will lessen the opportunity to convert your prospect to a customer. Finally is your postscript or PS. This is the second most viewed part within a sales letter because most viewers are page scrollers. Their curiosity will drive them towards the end of your sales letter, which is the PS. This is where you must make your offer impactful. Sum up your offer in two or three lines by reminding them about your money back guarantee section and bonuses. You can even share the extended version of your testimonials here. Keep in mind, a lengthy sales letter will be deemed worthless if it doesn't make sales out of it. Tackle this problem by ensuring you send a clear and concise message in the sales letter. Rule of thumb for good copywriting is to not to use 10 words to describe something which you can say with 3 words or less. If you truly need to make it longer, consider making a sales video. Chances are you won't be able to write every word you want to put in a sales letter. So make a sales video with 80% likeness of your sales letter instead. Best of luck with your copywriting! In this module, you'll learn the steps on how and why you should outsource some of your tasks. As your business grows, time is your most precious asset, and it is more valuable than the money you are making. In the product launch model, creating a product is the most time-consuming phase. To mitigate this, you can outsource the job to freelancers or buy private label rights, PLR products. So I'm going to show you some sites to outsource your work the do's of outsourcing, and finally, purchasing an existing PLR content. Whenever you want to outsource, you need to ensure you get the best freelancers to get the job done for you. To make it easier, my top two website picks are Fiverr.com and Upwork.com. First off, Fiverr.com, the largest marketplace for digital services, lets you buy or sell any services starting at a flat rate of $5 per service. A service is known as a gig. Services offered are in multiples of $5, thus no negotiation of price. It can also go higher depending on the complexity and requirements of the project. It can be anything from as simple as creating a logo to voiceovers. To find out the best freelancers out there, make sure you evaluate your applicants and shortlist your best candidates. Once you've placed your order and aligned the timeline of your task, the next step is to wait for your job delivery. Once the task is completed, you can then proceed to pay the freelancer. Next is Upwork.com. You can hire freelancers on an hourly basis or one-off depending on your project requirements. Upwork is unique because of its tracking tool. This tool makes it easier for you to track the progress of your project. You can use this tool to pay your freelancer based on their completion and timing. Another interesting feature of Upwork is inviting freelancers to your job posting. I advise to filter out the good and not so good applicants by sending them a message to understand if they can do the task. If you want to get to know them better, you may proceed with a phone, chat, or video interview. But usually, approving them online by evaluating their portfolio is sufficient. Next part is the do's of outsourcing. First thing you need to do is to clearly define the scope and schedule for your project. Keep in mind most successful outsourced projects derives from a clear statement of what the client wants to accomplish. Avoid generalizations at all cost. Your freelancer needs accurate information to provide you with their realistic outcome and reasonable quotation. Similar to your schedule requirements, be precise on your timing, or it will have a direct impact on the cost of the project. Next is for you to evaluate a service provider like how you would evaluate an employee. Hiring a freelancer is no different than hiring employees. 
When you go through their portfolio and proposals, don't hesitate to ask them questions. Check their references and ask feedback from other clients who have previously worked with them. You can always ask them questions to clarify and eliminate your doubts. Don't hire and hope for the best. Thirdly, don't choose a freelancer solely on the price. Though it may be tempting to hire a freelancer who could do the job for a cheaper price, never select a freelancer that way. Experienced buyers who have outsourced many projects have evaluated hundreds of proposals. Always recommend avoiding the highest price and lowest price bid. Buyers usually report their successful projects when the freelancers offered a balance between good value and quality projects. If you're still uncertain of their capabilities, you may consider asking them to do a paid mock-up or provide you with a basic outline of the work plan. Finally, you are to pay your freelancers based on a clearly defined project milestone. Having scheduled checkpoints is an easy way to ensure you meet your deadline realistically and the final project meets quality standards. Let me give you a guideline. You pay the freelancers 50% down payment and the final 50% upon completion of the project. This is for simple, straightforward jobs that can be completed easily. Another method to simplify your product creation is by purchasing private label rights or PLR content. It's a type of product which permits buyers to rebrand the content under their own name and brand. However, the downside of PLR products is its relatively low cost with wider affordability. It means many people will most likely have the same product with the same rights as you. You need to repurpose or repackage it before reselling or making it a part of your business. Welcome back. In this chapter, we cover creating your sales funnel. What's a sales funnel? A sales funnel is a follow-up sequence that upgrades your product offers. It's designed to maximize the amount of income you can earn from the customers on your site. After selling your first product, you realize one product is not enough. So you start selling your second, then a third, a fourth, and the list continues. If you think this is considered too much, just remember new mobile phones and cars are released every year. Demand is in abundance. If you don't come up with a proper business plan for the upgrade, others will grab the opportunity away from you. Strategizing is key, so you must have a sales funnel. So what makes a good sales funnel? It's difficult to profit from selling just the front end product. That's why every front end comes with an upsell to earn extra revenue and profits. The real money lies in the back end and it makes more than your front end offers. This is how internet marketers do six-figure launches. The first level of your funnel is called the low ticket offer. The price in this level is between seven and fifty dollars. This explains why most front end offers are mostly low ticket offers. Its real purpose is to generate buyer leads. This allows prospects to trust you enough to part with their money and spend it on your products. You even get to separate real buyers from the rest of the freebie seekers. Examples of low ticket offers are ebooks, special reports, or basic training courses. The second level is the middle ticket offer. The price range in this level is slightly higher than the previous one, which is between $97 and $197. Middle ticket offers are best suited as immediate upsells to your front end offers. Examples of the offers are upgrades, videos, templates, and even membership sites. The third funnel is one of our favorites, and it's called the high ticket offer. The price range for this offer lands within $297 to $497. This is where the real money lies. It's much easier to make a significant amount of money by selling your higher ticket items. As an example, you need to make at least 42 sales at $7 to make just one $279 sale. You can group products and sell them as bundled packages, platinum membership, group coaching, seminar tickets, and licensing deals. What comes after this is your ultra high ticket. The great thing about this level is the unlimited price range you can offer. Starting from your higher ticket offer, it can go up to $997 to $100,000 and above. Examples of your ultra-high ticket offers include private coaching workshops and even exclusive licensing deals. 
This level leads up to the final part of sales funnel, providing longevity to your business. So if you don't have a sales funnel, you'll need to constantly promote new products to keep the business afloat. Worse still, you're leaving a ton of money on the table. In this module, I'll show you how to flood your inbox with crazy amounts of sales using Joint Venture Partnerships, or JV. In every business model, especially one related to product launches, you need to leverage off promoters. In other words, a JV. A JV is a deal between product vendors or creators and the affiliate to promote a product in exchange for a commission. So, unlike traditional agreements, JV partners may enjoy several special privileges, like higher commission payout, early review access, and a degree of influence over your offer and product launches. So, why should you consider having a JV to promote your launches and products? Well, which of these two offers more leverage? Scenario 1, you promote using 100% of your efforts, or Scenario 2, 1% of 100 people's efforts as they promote your product simultaneously throughout your product launch period. It's a lot better to have an army of affiliates promoting your product because you get a lot more leverage for less effort. Now that you've seen its potential, there are five top things to avoid in striking a potential JV partner. The first thing to do is not to approach a potential JV partner whenever he is busy. Sounds like a no-brainer, but you'd be surprised by how many product vendors annoy the heck out of a busy JV affiliate with multiple direct messages. Try not to disturb a potential JV who is busy prepping for his next product launch, his next vacation, or anything that needs his utmost attention. You might end up pushing him away. This is by no means your fault, so try to avoid this from happening by being more observant on the people you aspire to work with. Keep tabs on their schedule and approach them when they are the least busy. The second important don't is to not invite your JV partner on a very short notice. If you have a product launch coming up soon, never give a notice of invitation on the very last minute. It is courteous to give the potential JV partner a heads-up notice of at least two to four weeks in advance before your product launch. The next part is inviting a JV partner with nothing valuable to offer. If the potential JV sees you don't have any reciprocal value to offer or history of not reciprocating equally or better in promotions, then it'll be difficult for the JV to promote your product. Next is to avoid inviting a JV who is not in the same niche as you. Are there irrelevant products you are pushing your potential JV to promote to their subscribers? You can't expect your JV who is in the internet marketing make money online niche to push out a personal development product. The last thing to avoid is doing the me-first approach. This is one of the most ineffective approaches. The reality of inviting a JV partner is that you need the JV partner more than he needs you. What your JV wants to know is whenever he promotes your product, what's in it for him. So ensure that both of you have a promotion that requires more or less the same effort from each other to keep things in balance. These are the top five things to avoid when striking up potential JV partners. To make things easier for you and your JV partners, offer to do all the work so they can focus on what they do best, bringing in sales for you. In this module, I'm going to show you what you need to do during your product launch. There are three phases in a product launch, pre-launch, launch, and post-launch. If you do not pay extra attention on the preparation, the pre-launch phase will either make you or break you. There are four things to take note of during the pre-launch phase, which is 1. Checking the completion and functionality of the products. 2. Conducting split tests. 3. Site testing. and 4. JV invites. Ensure that your product is completed before the launch. Make sure that it meets all the requirements and specifications of how you want your products to be. For example, if it is software, you need to make sure that it runs smoothly and is not missing any important files. Ensure all of your download links are working. To play it safe, create mirror downloads as well. Next is conducting split tests. Split testing is when you have different versions of your sales letter headline, copy, ad, or any marketing collaterals. The way it works is, 
Traffic coming to your site is split evenly to the different versions of the sales letter or video. When you conduct controlled tests and gather empirical data, you can figure exactly what works and not works for your launch. The three main things you need to split test is your headline, the price, and also the bonuses. Next is to test the sites. Test your site two to three days before the launch. Continue to test one day prior to your launch to ensure everything's in place. The only way to see if the function is working is by placing an order yourself. Finally, check up on your JV invites. Check in with them one to two days prior, ensure they are provided with the correct link to your JV invite page and the specific details of your offer. If you have, let's say, 50 JVs, you must check in with all 50 of them as they are worth every single sale. Compile your JV list on a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet so it will be more manageable and organized. This way you can easily track who has responded to you and who hasn't. There are three things to do during the launch phase. One, observe. Two, answer support tickets. And three, constant check-ins with your JVs. The first checklist is about observation. You need to once again check if everything's working on your side. From your website technicalities to the server, your sales letter, and most important, your product or service you offer. Second, answering your support tickets. Answer and attend to any support tickets as soon as possible. If there are some complaints lodged by your clients or if they ask for a refund, check with them straight away. You must take this into account and always remember to personalize your support messages to the clients. Finally, follow up with your JVs. Always motivate your JVs with cash prizes every day until the end of the product launch. This is to motivate them to continue promoting your offer. That's all there is to it. In the next module, I'll be sharing with you the steps you need to do during the post-launch of your products. In this final chapter of Product Launch Secrets Model, you learn the things you need to do post-launch. There are three things for you to take note of. One, building your mailing list. Two, creating a solid foundation with your buyers. Three, planning your next launch. First, build your mailing list. This is a valuable asset to your future launch. Making money with your mailing list has proven to be effective. If you have built your mailing list, you also have the opportunity to execute the following. 1. Continue to sell the dream by delivering valuable content and establishing trust. 2. Promoting and generating sales. That's why you're launching products and doing business. 3. Gathering testimonials and surveys to gather feedback. Next is to build a solid foundation with your list and most important, get them to act. This is where you can make more and scale higher each time you mail your list. There are four important tips in sending out emails to your list after the product launch. One, congratulate your mailing list for going through and purchasing the course. The first three to five email series should guide the audience to learn more about the product. Two, don't just sell, sell and sell. Gain trust by offering value. Teach your audience something. Give them some secret tips. Three, make them feel exclusive by being a part of your list. Always provide a call to action so they can respond. Finally, plan your next launch. This is the ultimate secret of internet marketing gurus to big paydays. When you continue launching products, it increases your presence in the market. It gives you a higher chance to become a market leader. That wraps up the business model for your product launch secrets. Good luck in your next launch! Welcome to the second internet business model, which is the advertising model. In this model, you'll learn about solo ads brokering. This model equips you with the relevant information to build your business as a solo ads broker. First, the basics. What are solo ads? To make it simple, solo ads is a form of advertisement sent out to an entire or a portion of an email subscriber list. The rule is you are purchasing your intended audience or targeted traffic in the form of a mailing list. Your main goal is to drive them to your landing page. You may also purchase solo ads to promote an affiliate link. Where do you find your targeted audience or your intended mailing list? Generally, when you have ideal audiences in mind, 
You have two choices. You may deal with a solo owner where they have already established their own mailing list in a specific niche. You may also contact an ads broker who acts as an agent for this business. This will be further discussed in the following modules. When you purchase a solo ad run, the emails sent to your audiences are dedicated emails. This means the emails revolve entirely around the product or service you intend to promote. The emails are focused on a particular niche, area, depending on the product or service advertised. This may range from the selling of supplements to fitness campaigns. Why solo ads? In a nutshell, solo ads work best for those intending to drive quick traffic in large numbers. This can be applied in contexts where you are about to launch a product or if you need traffic to be sent to a web page immediately. In the next chapter, we will be talking about how solo ads work in detail and how and where to purchase your solo ads. In this chapter, you will learn how to generate and purchase your traffic via solo ads, specifically focusing on solo owners. Mentioned in the previous module, in order to search for your intended mailing list, there are two approaches, one, solo owners, two, solo ads brokers. What's the difference between the two? Solo owners are individuals who own their own solo ads. They have established their own mailing lists where they will sell a solo ad to you and is dependent on your market. Usually, solo owners will charge you by cost per click, CPC. This depends on how many customers are interested and click on your email for further information. Having said that, there are some downsides in opting to purchase your traffic from solo owners. As the name suggests, solo owners are only solo owners. Initially, most of them do have a specific mailing list for marketing and business purposes. But as their mailing list expands, many people inquire to purchase their lists where they have turned it into their main niche. Therefore, they are only interested in making money by selling you their lists. Sometimes it's possible that their mailing list does not even correspond to the advertisement that you intend to sell. This means you may be wasting resources as you're promoting your product to the wrong audience. Second, certain markets or niches have very few solo owners as the market can be relatively new or it's not been explored much by consumers. For instance, markets that cater toward very specific products for very specific audiences. Example, supplements to control the sugar level of diabetes patients. As a result, you might find some difficulties in generating or finding suitable mailing lists for your via solo owners. Another drawback is, as the solo owners are charging you based on CPC, the conversions may be low. As stated earlier, some of the mailing lists would not entirely hit the bullseye for you, as the audiences are a mismatch. Now you've understood solo owners. In the next chapter, we cover another vehicle to generate your traffic, which is solo ads brokers. We explore another initiative to generate your traffic, which is based on solo ads brokers. By the end of this chapter, you will be able to weigh your choices in generating traffic. What are solo ad brokers and how do they aid in your generating traffic? Solo ads brokers are individuals who may manage 20 to 30 mailing lists assigned by their respective owners. They observe the progress of each list carefully. They are also known as the agents of solo ads, just like how real estate agents function in the property investment scene. They know which lists are active and which are not. They also have an idea of the list's interests and how many clicks are made per list. They are paid by the list owners and they will usually charge you based on cost per thousand CPM. Therefore, you don't have to worry about the cost as it is highly unlikely for them to charge you unreasonably. How do we measure CPM? CPM is a jargon referring to the cost of a media vehicle reaching 1,000 audience. We will be discussing that in more detail in the following module. Usually, how solo brokers work is they advise you on the traffic you should purchase based on available lists. When you test run your solo ad and you find it is not generating the amount of traffic you want, you can always go back and discuss about the problem that you're facing to your solo brokers. They are more than willing to help and compensate for your loss by doing what they call a make good, where they try and improve the situation. 
They either will provide you with another mailing list or they will give you discounts in your future purchase. It is in their nature to ensure that their customers have a good experience. This is because their goal is to sell as many lists as possible to the right market, and they want their customers to come back and make another purchase with them in the future. They want to be in the business for the long haul. This kind of transaction is also made available through Facebook Solo Ads Group. It can be a public or a closed group. In a particular group, there will be solo ads brokers, vendors, as well as the buyers. The brokers advertise the lists that they sell. Meanwhile, the customers who purchase the lists can publish testimonials on the group's page. Therefore, the members of the group will get direct feedback, and this will enable them to weigh their selection of lists. Examples of Solo Ads Facebook groups are as follows. 1. Solo Ads and Funnel Clicks Market. 2. Solo Ads, Ad Swaps, and Email Marketing. Again, one of the drawbacks is that the solo ads brokers are also dependent on the market. You need to scout around to ensure you are dealing with the right broker where they provide you with your intended audience. Different markets have different solo ads brokers. Do not waste your resources by making the wrong choice. In this chapter, we provide you the expert rules on how to kickstart your own solo ads business. There are three major rules to be a solo ads broker. One, you need to build your own list. Two, be selective in renting out your list. Three, track the progress of the solo ads. The first expert rule is to start building your own list. This is important as you can never start your solo ads broker journey without having a list. Usually, a solo ads broker must have a large list which can sell to your clients so you can deliver the maximum amount of clicks. There are various ways to start creating your own list, but I will list down the three most effective methods, which are 1. Creating a call to action on your website. Your website can be your traffic generator if you know how to use it to its maximum potential. You can allow them to sign up for a newsletter on the sidebar or footer, or you can even have a pop-up when they visit the page to ask them to sign up. 2. Using social media to drive traffic. Social media is not only an important marketing tool and lead magnet, but it also serves as a traffic generator. People click links that direct them to a website or your content, and from there you can ask them to sign up for your newsletter or mailing list. This can be done through Facebook ads, Twitter ads, and other social media platforms. 3. Hosting a webinar. A free webinar is all that it takes to expand your list. You can provide valuable content related to your niche via the webinars. Provide them the materials for the webinar by asking them for their email. This way you can begin sending your materials and newsletters within that list. The second step is to be selective in renting out your list. There are many cases where solo ad brokers sell the list that they have built to clients who market anything and everything. This is done for the sake of having your list rented out, but it will not sustain your business in the long term. Why? This will inevitably give you and your buyer a bad reputation. For instance, if you have built a list focusing on the personal development niche and you advertise internet marketing materials, this will confuse your subscribers and some of them may consider it as spam. It's also possible that you may lose some of the people in the list as they feel misguided by the information disseminated. Therefore, it's important for you to be selective and calculative in choosing your clients to rent out your list to. Always stay true to why the audience opted into your list. The third and final rule is to track the progress of the list you have sold, which is the number of clicks. This step is important so you have an idea of how much you are able to deliver to your clients. The number of clicks also tells you how well your ad performs and to ensure that you get value for money. Remember that numbers do not lie. So track your clicks. You can use the WordPress plugin called Pretty Link where it has both paid and free versions. You are able to create short links using your domain name where it has all the tracking required. But make sure you possess a WordPress account beforehand. You can also use Click Magic, where the system makes it extremely easy for you to track your data or number of clicks. Click Magic will offer you information such as your traffic score and which tier did you obtain the traffic from. You are now set to kickstart your solo ads broker journey.
We have come to the fifth chapter of the Solo Ads series. In this chapter, you learn how to scale your Solo Ads business to keep it going. The Solo Ads broker business is highly dependent not only on the quality of the list, but also word of mouth. Your business has a very low chance of gaining frequent and loyal clients if you have poor results or low opt-ins percentage. There are two major ways for you to scale your Solo Ads broker business to ensure maximum performance each time around. 1. Maintaining and cultivating your list. 2. Provide testimonials and feedback of your performance. The first step is to maintain and cultivate your list. There are two effective methods to execute this. 1. Create valuable email content. Your content must offer incredible value if you want your subscribers to stay subscribed and forward your email to their family or friends that are not on the list. 2. Create multiple email subscription types. By segregating your email subscription types, you can be more focused by sending more targeted content to a very specific audience. The people in your list are more likely to click through emails that are specifically for them. Always bear in mind that you need to stay true to why people in your list opted in. Do not mislead them. The second step in scaling your solo ads business is to provide testimonials and feedback of your performance. As mentioned in the previous chapters, you can search for solo ad brokers and the list that they sell by joining Facebook groups. In these Facebook groups, you're able to view a wide range of testimonials from solo ad vendors, which consist of how did they build their list, how many clicks were ordered, how many clicks delivered, the opt-in percentage, tier 1 percentage, how many sales accumulated. By providing testimonials and feedback of your solo ads performance, you can build your credibility and advertise your business to your prospects. You can also ask for feedback from your previous clients. In this final chapter, you are able to understand the advantages as well as the disadvantages of venturing as a solo ads broker. This helps you to consider and weigh your options so you can minimize your loss and maximize your return on investment. Let's discuss the pros. First, you are able to gain massive profit in very little time. When you have mastered the art of selling solo ads, especially in a targeted niche, there is certainly a huge potential in accumulating massive profit, especially if you have a set of fresh subscribers each round and loyal clients. The second advantage is you're able to grow your list of subscribers almost instantly. This saves you a lot of time as you do not have to go through the daunting route of having to build your own list from scratch, as well as searching for potential prospects. You get double the profit as you're able to expand your list, at the same time gain massive profits. Third, being a solo ads broker enables you to make your own sales. You have a huge advantage and you can make double the profit by selling your clients solo ads and to advertise your own product as well through your list. Very minimal effort, but you are paid a boatload of commissions. Having listed the advantages of selling solo ads, it's imperative to also look at the drawbacks. First, it may cost a lot for you to try, especially if you're new to the solo ads business. Startup costs can be quite costly due to mentoring requirements and the knowledge needed on solo ads. It will require some time for you before you can get accustomed to the business. My advice is to work within your budget, as sometimes it'll cost you more than you could afford. Start small and scale small in building your list, then go bigger along the way. One of the reasons why it's better for you to start small and scale small, especially if you're new to the business, is because there's absolutely no guarantee that the list you created will convert. This is the second drawback. Usually, sign-up rates coming from solo ads are pretty high. However, how many of those clicks convert into subscribers, sales, and long-term buyers? Therefore, start small, scale small, and go bigger as you go. In this module, we cover the e-commerce internet business model. The e-commerce business is one of the hottest trending businesses online right now because it allows access to hundreds and millions of people worldwide, making it easier to gain buyers, sales, and massive profits. Some facts about e-commerce. It will not get you riches and wealth overnight. It's not an overnight success, but it is an easy way to get sales and profits. 
you need to put in the hours to succeed. Next, you have more time to think about growing your business. If you want to grow your business further, you need to spend effort on marketing, advertising, and promoting your online store. You don't have to bother with shipping and management. All those tasks can be done automatically by your supplier and online store. There are six elements in your e-commerce model. 1. Choosing your niche. 2. Create your own brand. 3. Look for suppliers and designers. 4. Set up your online store. 5. Print on demand, POD. 6. Drop shipping. Next, you need to choose a niche for your online business. A product niche helps to establish a solid ground for your business. You can't just change from one business to another and expect your trustworthy buyers to keep up. Start selling something which you have at least a slight interest in or liking in. This is so you have the motivation to get through the days of low sales and technical issues. There are three ways to decide a niche. First, look up the latest trend. This method serves only as a short-term business model to earn you a quick dollar. The tools you can use to search for the newest craze are Trendasore.com and Terrapeak.com. Previously, the world was fascinated with the idea of selfie sticks. Those who managed to keep up with the selfie stick trend were earning over $50,000 selling only selfie sticks. Nowadays, it's the fidget spinner. What's next? Next is to look up any e-commerce website like Amazon and eBay and search for its best seller list. Focus on products with good reviews but with little sellers. This gives you lesser competitors, which means better opportunity to make sales. Make a spreadsheet of trending items in the last three to six months to understand market demands. The last method is to pick a niche using the following criterions. 1. Select a niche you can add value to. Adding value to your niche will set you apart from most competitors. 2. Choose a niche with passionate and desperate buyers. You're looking at demand. Where there is demand, there are buyers. 3. Products that are hard to find locally. This is a unique feature for your business. It'll be easier for customers to look for you because of your products. 4. Products that are disposable or consumable. This is so you get repeat customers. Finally, products that require a lot of accessories or, in other words, add-ons. Any product that requires back-end items are worth selling. You don't necessarily need to choose a niche that is 100% based on these criteria. Mix and match them and see which ones work out the best for you and your business. First off, I'm going to show you how you can create your own brand. A brand's like an identity for you and your business. Not only does it give you a sense of ownership, but a good brand connects to your prospects and buyers at an emotional level. Do you remember the last time you bought from your favorite brand? When you finally bought it, it made you feel happy and fulfilled, all because you got it from your favorite brand. That's the goal you want to achieve when establishing a brand connection to your customers. When you have your own brand, you are unique and interesting. One of the most distinctive advantages of having a brand is the ability to add value to everything you're selling. This is how you secure your customer's loyalty. What's more, it's easier for buyers to make your products viral because it's perceived as unique. Here are some ways to get your brand going. First, capture your own unique photos. This is so it's not the same as other stock photos. Any item you think resonates with your brand is unique on its own. Next is to hire a photographer for a professional picture. If you want to have high quality photos of your products, this is one way to do it. Third, you can design your own logo to reflect your products and company. You can visit sites like logomaker.com or even canva.com. Both sites provide users the ability to create their own logo. From color schemes to objects used to symbolize your brand, you are free to choose whatever you want. Then you can put your brand, mission, and values on your site. The purpose of your business is important to your buyers. If what you're trying to achieve is not within their interest, they won't be so keen on buying anything from you. That's why it's best to clarify your purpose and vision. Another way to brand your business is through the color of your website. Your website should have its own distinctive design. The purpose of this is to give your online store a color identity. 
See how most of us remember McDonald's because of its big yellow M? Or maybe the black and white stripes of Sephora? Finally, you can give out free stuff or vouchers to your customers. Customers are more likely to buy something from you when they feel appreciated or rewarded. You can give them free stuff once they've purchased their fifth item or spend $100 in a single receipt or others of equivalent. Next, we discuss about hiring suppliers and designers. To begin looking for products, you need to be on the lookout for any white-label products. White-label products are items manufactured by a single company and are rebranded by another company to make it look like their own. Many giant companies practice this method. Some white-label products out there range from makeup brands all the way to t-shirts. Once you've found your supplier, you need to ensure that the companies are willing to drop ship. Most of them will let you pre-purchase units if you want to keep some of them at your home office, but they will keep your products in their warehouse and fulfill your order for you. There are many suppliers out there that can provide the service for you. Some of my personal favorites are GearBubble.com and PowerMerch.io. Both companies will assist you on supplying and even designing your own products. There are many ways for you to hire a designer. But if you have the skills to design your own t-shirts, caps, or even bags, you can do it yourself. All you need is a good software like Photoshop or Illustrator and you're all set. However, should you prefer to outsource the job to someone else, then hiring others to do the artwork for you would be your best solution. Look for designers at Upwork.com, Fiverr.com, and even Behance.com. Any freelancing website should have freelancers who are skilled in designing clothing artwork or any others. Post a job under the niche of your product. Make sure to post a precise and concise job scope to your freelancer. Some sites even allow you to post a job to a specific freelancer. If you found the freelancer of your choice, you can invite him to do the job for you. Otherwise, you can just post the job to anyone with designing skills. Next is setting up your own online store. You'll be needing a suitable platform for your products to sell from. Your site is the main medium between you and your prospects. They're going to review your items and place their orders here. Which platform is the right kind of platform for your business? Based on research and analytics, the best platform that you can use to build your website is using Shopify, Facebook, and Instagram. Let's start with Shopify. Even for beginners, this site is the most convenient option there is. Shopify is one of the best sites to help you run your online business. It provides a variety of tools to help you. From showcasing your products to processing your payments, Shopify makes your online business work best for you. Here are some of the important key features of Shopify that will help your online business. Shopify has their own payment provider. It accepts credit cards and even PayPal payments. The flexibility in accepting different payment methods will make it easier for your customers during checkout. Next is Shopify's online sales channels. Shopify supports several different online sales channels where you can sell your products. By connecting each sales channel to Shopify, you can keep track of your products, orders, and customers in one place, no matter where you are selling your products from. Some of the sites that support Shopify's online sales channel are Facebook, Messenger, Pinterest, and even Amazon. It also supports a Buy Button channel where you can connect to your very own website or blog, Tumblr, or even WordPress. Finally, Shopify eases your tracking, shipping, and ordering list, from deciding your shipping method to automatically recording orders you've made. While Shopify is one of the best e-commerce website hubs for your online store, Facebook and Instagram, on the other hand, have some of the best places to drive traffic and engagements. Both social media platforms are often used by those who are making their first step in e-commerce. Most business owners use both accounts to post their offers alongside with some of their product information. Even if creating a page or group is easy to set up using both Facebook and Instagram, it's unfortunately inconvenient for buyers to place their orders. This is because social network platforms are not designed for online trade, placing orders, making payments, and tracking your orders. Driving traffic to your website is what they do best.
The first type of e-commerce business you can do is print-on-demand or POD. An on-demand delivery is the immediate or scheduled delivery of your product to your customer. It's being initiated immediately right after they make their order. Many of the largest retailers in the world have taken a note of POD business and realize they can assist in getting products to customers quicker. Retailers like Amazon, Target, and even Walmart can help you ship your products faster than a direct delivery from your manufacturer. If you're interested in getting your products delivered faster, then looking up for a retailer would suit your business. For your POD to work, you must first have your 1. Product niche. It can either be clothing, appliances, bags, or anything that you find interesting and demanding. 2. Product brand. Remember to give your business a brand to help customers identify your service easily. 3. Supplier and designer. List them down so you won't have to be in constant search for more suppliers and designers. 4. Online store. A Shopify online store, Facebook, or Instagram accounts are all you need. For example, you're running a POD business on books. Your book files must be prepared in a print-ready format or PDF. It's best to do a test printout before printing it for your customers. Then the business owner needs to specify their distribution terms with a capable POD supplier or manufacturer. Ensure that your digital files are prepared and formatted to fit the cover, content, back cover, and even the spine. Then send the digital files to your book production team. Then you can list your books to your website. Boost the views by announcing it to your multiple social media platforms. Always prepare a different marketing plan to reach out to a bigger audience. Next, a customer or two will browse through your website and find your book. If it appears interesting to them, they will order your book. Shopify, your website, will send a message to your POD book manufacturer. It will automatically order the same amount your customer wants. Once they've received the order, they're going to print, bind, and package the item into a book. You'll get to see the status of your book production in your Shopify account. When your book's ready, they're going to ship the book to you first or directly to your customer. This depends on your agreement with a manufacturer. You will then pay the POD book manufacturer a percentage of the book's selling price. The print-on-demand model works with products like mugs, necklaces, hoodies, shirts, leggings, and virtually any printed items. Suppliers, which you can search for, who provide such services are GearBubble.com, PowerMerch.io, and CustomCat.com. The final e-commerce business type is dropshipping. Unlike POD, running a dropshipping business means you sell the products that you don't own to your customers. When you receive orders, your chosen supplier ships the product directly to your customers. Your profits simply the difference between the cost of your own purchase and the money that you asked from your customers. All you need to have is 1. Product niches. Every successful business must have their own niche. 2. Choosing your supplier. Prepare a list of your own chosen suppliers. 3. Sign up for your dropshipping store using one of the most popular dropship hubs, alidropship.com. Create an account on alidropship.com to personalize your own dropshipping web store. Alidrop provides all the technical conveniences. You won't be having troubles communicating with customers, handling orders, keeping track of deals, and others. Customers will be delighted to find a specially developed website that allows them to place their orders and make purchases quickly and easily. Plus, the web store provides analytics to shop owners. You get to see detailed statistics on the amount of orders, revenues, visitors, etc. They can also track your store's performance and make any changes that are necessary. Next is the potential high income that you can earn. By selling items from your store, you'll get bigger profits from other platforms. Customers also prefer to make purchases in web stores as opposed to blogs or social media. So first, fill in your stores with the products of your niche. Then post them online. You can post them at your social media website or in your own dropship website. Post pictures and detailed descriptions of the products from your chosen supplier. Next, a customer or two will be interested on in what you're offering. 
Then they'll place an order and pay for it. You'll receive a notification whenever a customer places an order. When that happens, contact the shipper who stocks up on this product. Place the same order as your customer to your supplier. Once you've received a confirmation order from your supplier, you need to inform the supplier to deliver the order to the address of your customer. Double check the location of your customer's address. Then the customer receives the order and your transaction is completed. That wraps up your online business model for both POD and drop shipping. Always remember to update your online store and be consistent in your delivery timing. Customers are happier to buy items from an engaging and a responsible store owner. Hello and welcome to the final module of Internet Business Models, High Ticket Programs. In this module, you'll learn how to generate massive and instant profits with less effort. What are high ticket programs? High ticket offers or programs are usually associated with sales starting from $1,000 and can go up to $25,000 or more. The products you offer may range from digital, coaching, or consultation products or all of the mentioned to provide clients with high value training and exceptional results. These products usually offer clients the ultimate or turnkey solution to their problems. In order for you to promote your high-ticket programs, they have to go through a sales funnel which brings your client through a journey with you. You normally start with your front-end offer, which is your first offer, and is generally priced low or free. The purpose is to attract a pool of potential customers to your front-end. This can be an ebook or a webinar. You don't have to worry about your front-end offers not making much as this can be compensated with the massive sales gained from your high-ticket offers later in your funnel. You notice not all of your clients will make it to the high-ticket offer, as the nature of high-ticket offers are exclusive and are intended for high-value clients, therefore programs are also priced at higher cost. Only clients who are willing to invest in a huge amount for greater value and are aiming for a transformation in their business are most likely to purchase your high-ticket programs. In the next chapter, we go through a step-to-step -step guide to execute your very own high-ticket offer. Hello there and welcome back. In this chapter, you learn why high-ticket programs are important in your online business. High-ticket programs serve as an integral role in your online business, especially when it comes to your sales funnel. This is where you're able to gain massive sales with minimum effort. Why high-ticket programs? There are four main reasons why you should incorporate high-ticket programs in your online business. 1. Transformation 2. Video testimonials 3. Filtered clients 4. Instant commissions First is transformation. This is where you project the highest value in what you're offering. Your high-ticket program has to provide the ultimate solution to your client's problem. It needs to be transformational or life-changing to them. Provide them the answer they've been looking for all this while. This builds your reputation as well as credibility, especially if you've just started out. Secondly are video testimonials. When you've successfully gained your high-ticket clients, you're able to gather video testimonials from them. Why is that important? This is your future social proof. When your clients provide you with positive testimonials of your programs and products, this will again build your credibility and reputation. This helps you attract prospects which eventually turn into your high-ticket clients. The third reason why high-ticket programs are important to your online business is because this is where you gain your filtered clients. These are your premium clients who are willing to pay a high price to solve their problems. You manage to gain these clients by bringing them through a journey from a three-week webinar to attending a strategic session with you and finally taking in your offer. This is why executing the three stages in creating your high-ticket offer is important. You're able to filter your prospects and only deal with those who are really interested in your offer. This saves you a lot of time and resources. Finally, earn massive sales. You're able to gain instant massive sales with minimal effort. You don't need hundreds of sales to break even and earn massive profits. All you need is a small number of highly qualified clients who are interested in purchasing your high-ticket programs.
Let me illustrate an example. Would you rather get 1,000 people to pay you $7 each for a program, or would you have 100 people pay you $1,000? Clearly, the latter saves you a lot of time and, most important, will get you earning massive as well as instant sales. Welcome back. In this chapter, we'll list down the pros and cons of high-ticket programs so you can maximize your return on investment and minimize loss. First and foremost, let's list down the values high-ticket programs may offer toward your online business. The benefits are 1. High-ticket programs help you build a scalable business. 2. Massive and instant commissions with less effort. 3. Less money and time spent on marketing. First, high-ticket programs help you build a scalable business. Let's illustrate an example. If it costs you $200 to generate a lead and you're selling your product at $300, you only gain $100 in profit. However, if you sell your product at $1,000, which is your high-ticket offer, you instantly gain a massive profit of $800. When you gain massive sales and profits just by selling a single product, this means you have more time to scale your business as you're not focusing your time and money in searching for leads, closing deals, and marketing your offers. The second advantage of high-ticket programs is you're able to gain massive and instant profits with less effort. For instance, low-ticket products demand for you to sell in high quantities in order to generate massive profits. However, it's possible for you to generate 10 times than what you are earning through your low-ticket offers by selling a single high-ticket offer. You're able to work efficiently and effectively with minimum cost as well as utilizing your time to focus on generating more and more high-ticket sales. Last but not least, high-ticket programs mean less money and time spent on marketing your products. Let's say you aim to make $100,000 a year and you're selling low-ticket items at $100. In order to achieve your target, you would need to sell at least 1,000 products. Bear in mind, to gain massive sales, you also need a large mailing list. However, if you choose to sell high-ticket programs at a price of $10,000, this means you only need to sell 10 programs within a year. This means you don't have to constantly run ads to market your products and offers. Therefore, fewer expenses invested on promotional and marketing strategies. Having listed down the values that high-ticket programs may offer to your business, there are certain drawbacks which you would need to consider. These drawbacks are 1. High-ticket programs are big investments, and you need to build trust with your clients. 2. High-ticket programs require a high level of expertise, especially if you're conducting coaching sessions and workshops. First, it's obvious that your high-ticket programs are big investments, especially for your clients. Therefore, if you want people to purchase your offer, you need some time to build your client's trust. It's not guaranteed that you'll be able to close a deal straight away due to the price and value of the high-ticket offers. As a result, it can sometimes be time-consuming just to close one sale. The second factor to consider are high-ticket programs require a high level of expertise, especially if you're conducting coaching sessions or workshops. Clients are paying you a boatload of money as they are also expecting a lot in return. You're providing them with offers of the highest value within your sales funnel. This may include a one-to-one -one session on how to set up their online business from scratch, a three-day workshop on product creation or a group mastermind event. Therefore, you can't simply offer high-ticket programs if you're not equipped with the level of expertise and knowledge within your niche. You also need some time to build your reputation so you can gain your client's trust. Hello and welcome back. In this chapter, we walk you through the steps in creating your own high-ticket programs. There are three stages in creating your high-ticket programs. One, build a list, minimum 2,000 to 3,000 subscribers. Two, organize a free webinar for three weeks. Three, offer them a transformational program worth $5,000. The first stage in realizing your high-ticket program is to build a list of at least 2,000 to 3,000 subscribers. This step is important because this is where you generate your high-ticket leads from. Without a list, there is no audience for your show to begin with. 
You can build your list almost instantly via solo ads as mentioned in the second business model. This saves you a lot of time and helps you tremendously in acquiring prospects. The second stage is to organize a free webinar for your subscribers for three consecutive weeks. Email your subscribers regarding the webinar and get them to register for it. During the webinar session, give them a preview of your high-ticket offer and tell them what you want and what they can expect from it. You should also tackle their pain points according to your niche and why they need to get their hands on your high-ticket program. By the end of the three-week webinar run, make sure you direct your subscribers to the Strategic Session page. This is where you filter your subscribers and select the most qualified ones to attend a one-on-one -on -one phone interview with you to discuss their interest and intention in your high-ticket program. The final stage is to offer a transformational program to them. This is your high-ticket program. If you are relatively new to the internet marketing niche, I advise you to place a $5,000 price tag on your high-ticket offer. Remember, you're offering programs with the highest value to your clients. Your high-ticket program can be in the form of coaching sessions over a period of time, workshops, or even retreats. We will discuss this further in the following chapters. Welcome back to the third module of the High Ticket Program Model. In this chapter, we talk about the two different strategies to hypnotize your prospects towards your high ticket programs. The two different strategies to execute your high ticket offers are 1. The $500 filter 2. Educating your prospects through different channels First is the $500 filter. The first step to take in filtering your prospects towards your high ticket programs is by offering your subscribers a $500 program. The price is set to $500 as to ensure you attract only qualified clients that would take the high ticket program seriously. Some prospects who participate in your front end offer are only interested in the freebies and bonuses offered. The worst kind of clients are those who want free stuff and are demanding. You're not going to get them to invest a single cent with you, therefore filtering your potential high-ticket clients is an important step. Usually, your $500 program will cover areas such as 1. How to make their very first sale, 2. How to gain subscribers, 3. How to set up an online business. When you have provided them with all the information above, you can then proceed to offer them your $5,000 high-ticket program. As mentioned in the previous chapter, your high-ticket program provides the highest value and solutions to your client's problem, as well as strategies to seal the deal sales and taking their business to the next level. The second strategy is to educate your prospects through different channels. These channels include content related to the niche you are focusing on. 1. Videos 2. Articles 3. Lessons 4. Case Studies 5. Report Ideally, educate your prospects utilizing the necessary channels for three weeks before proceeding to your high-ticket programs. When you have educated them for three weeks, you can then sell them your high-ticket program worth $5,000. Welcome back to the high-ticket program model. In this chapter, we walk you through the high-ticket program's options available for you. There are various methods for you to choose from to make money with high-ticket programs. These options are 1. Sell through automated webinars 2. Done-for-you services 3. Mastermind groups 4. Seminar, retreats, or workshops First, you can sell your high-end products via automated or even evergreen webinars. Webinars are a great option to consider as they enable you to attract a large number of qualified prospects in need of your services when you focus on your niche and market your webinar strategically. These prospects appreciate the value you deliver and are willing to purchase your products no matter how much it costs. Of course, this depends on how well you pitch your program in the webinar. By marketing your products to a large number of audiences at once, you save a lot of time and generate instant sales. You can easily sell $997 to $2,997 in programs through automated webinars. These webinars may run for three to four weeks. The second option for you to consider is done-for-you services. This means you can offer a packaged offer to your clients, which contains various services from building their landing page or websites 
to creating and marketing their products. This requires a high level of involvement from you and your team in completing your clients' requests, but you get paid a very high price. Done-for-you services may range from $2,000 up to $100,000, depending on the type of services you offer and what the clients request. The third option is mastermind groups. A mastermind group works where your clients pay you $1,000 to $10,000 per month to work with you in a group setting. This can be a group meeting held every month, discussing on marketing strategies, product launches, as well as tips and techniques within your niche. Last but not least are seminars, retreats, or workshops. You may organize high-ticket retreats, seminars, or workshops, discussing on strategies to earn massive commissions and sales within your niche and how to execute it. You may also organize workshops for your clients to set up their very own online business. This may include how to 10 times their business, bringing their sales and profits to a whole new different level or something of ultra value and result. So your workshops or seminars may last a day or two to three days depending on the area you wish to focus on. Your clients will be willing to pay you $5,000 to $25,000 or more just to attend your high-ticket programs.